Hi everyone, my name is Debbie and I'm a full-time reseller. I sell mainly on eBay and Poshmark, also a little bit on Amazon and ThreadUp, and I have been a reseller for over 16 years. And today's video is mainly about how to list on eBay. I'm going to go step-by-step -step on exactly what you need to do to create a listing. And I also have a little mini Goodwill thrift haul along with it because you have to have inventory to list. So I will include that as well. When you first start selling on eBay, what I always suggest for people to do is look around your own home and find things that you are ready to part with and sell those things first for a couple of reasons. The first, if it's something that you owned, you're probably going to know a lot about it. And it's a lot easier to start creating your first listings with items that you know about. So that is a huge advantage. <laughs> and then the second one is it doesn't cost you anything. So if it's something that you would have gotten rid of anyway, it's good practice for you and not have to be worried about, oh, I spent this money, I don't wanna lose money. So first, just start around your own own house and see if there's anything that you are ready to get rid of that you would have just donated or given away to someone and start there. Then after that, a great place to source is Goodwill. You can go to the Goodwill bins where you pay by the pound. You can go to the regular Goodwill stores. There are discount stores. You can go to the mall and get items on clearance. There are many different ways you can get inventory. Usually, I find that that is the easiest part of it. I can find so much inventory all the time. So I knew I was making this video, so I thought, oh, I'm going to just swing into Goodwill and find a few things to list and take a little bit of video. I will show you the short little clip of inside Goodwill as I am sourcing for the items. I went and grabbed an armful of items. I didn't even get a cart this time because I was just trying to get a few things to show to list. Those were some Christmas cards. Sometimes vintage Christmas cards can be great, but those were not. And then the three wise men that I ended up picking up, I looked those up and I was excited that the sole comps looked good on those. And these jackets were all priced at $11.97. So I looked them up and although they were nice jackets and at the bins, I would have picked them up. I did not today. That t-shirt looked cool, but it, the sole comps were not great. That t-shirt looked really cool, and I just couldn't find anything on it, and I decided to not take it with me, and then I kind of regretted it. I thought, that could have been good. <laughs> then the Life is Good shirt, I picked that up. I picked those up regularly. That jacket was so cute. I thought for sure it was going to have great sole comps, but it didn't. So for $11.97, I passed on it. London Fog jacket, I normally pick those up, but I just decided at $11.97, I wasn't going to because it would probably sell for $35. That one is Lauren Jean's company, and it looked really nice, but it's not as good as Lauren Ralph Lauren. I skipped past that nightgown really quickly. I picked that up and then I went to the shirts because a little way down the aisle, I see a shirt sticking out with a cool pattern. And so I decide I'm gonna look through this part and there were a lot of shirts like that one lucky brand i would have picked that up at the bins for sure but not for that 535 at the regular store it just wouldn't have sold for enough and i just keep looking through sometimes you do have to look for a long time i might look at a hundred tags before i pick one up so there is patience involved that is a vintage Liz Sport, but I didn't think it would go for enough. And I picked that one up. I see the Union tag, and so it looks nice. I'm going to get that. That one I picked up also. That one was the one that had the cool pattern that I saw from afar and decided I wanted to go down and check it out. Then I keep looking. I picked up that shirt and wore it that evening. There's the tag. It was cut, but it was still obviously new. And I look through just a few more that was a pretty shirt and I did not pick it up though and keep looking to hope to find something else that is good <laughs> and I think I grabbed one more shirt in just a moment that one was pretty oh 
was that soft surroundings? I probably should have picked that up. Then One World, I think that one is a super slow mover for not very much money. Then here comes the last one. It is the red and gold shiny cool pattern. Looks very vintage to me. So I took that one home and that was the last of what I picked up for the day. I went and checked out and headed back home. So I ended up spending $35.74, but I feel like I got some good items for just a super quick trip into Goodwill. I will show you the things that I ended up taking home. The first thing, I went to the hard goods and I found these wise men and they were really pretty and sparkly and they had um, Bible verses on them. And I looked on the bottom and they had $35 um, price tags on each of them originally. I paid $1.91 each and I looked them up in Goodwill and it looked like they had some pretty good sold comps. So I picked these up. So this will be one of the items. I'm listing all three together. So that's one item that I'm going to take you through to list. And then the next item, American Eagle shorts. Those are pretty easy to find at Goodwill and they sell really well. They don't make just a huge profit, but I can pick one up. It was $4.34. It should sell for around $20 to $25 and they usually sell quickly. So this American Eagle Super Stretch X and they are a size eight. And so I will take you through and show you how I list that one. And then I picked up a golf skirt and this is the brand. It is Greg Norman Play Dry and golf skirts usually sell pretty good for me. They, this one was $4.34, has the built-in shorts underneath and it is a size eight, it has an adjustable tab inside. So I think I'll probably get about 20, 25 for those also. And then this one is a life is good shirt. And these sell really quickly. I love the brand <laughs> myself. They're only $3 and 33 cents at my Goodwill. And usually I'll sell them around $18 or so. So, and and in addition, they're usually a quick turnaround for a sale. Then I picked up a nightgown and I've been surprised lately. I've really passed on these for the longest time and then I started picking them up and they sell pretty fast and for a decent amount. This one was Miss Elaine Petite, size petite large, and it was really pretty. It's a seersucker material. It has a tassel, it zips down the front, it has pockets. I looked up comps while I was in the Goodwill and it looked like it would do pretty well. So I think it'll sell for around $30 and it was $4.34. Then I was leaving to check out and I just had to stop and see the shirts really quickly. And I found this shirt and it was brand new with tags. And you probably saw it in the video and it was called, or it still is called, Infinity Rain, and it looked like it would sell for probably $30 or so, but I got home and I needed to film a what sold video, so I ended up taking the tags off and wearing it, and I really liked it, and I wore it to dinner that night, so that is part of the fun. I find clothes all the time that I love. I wear them a couple times and then sell them, so I, I enjoy that part of it also. And there was a shirt that just kind of stood out whenever you are in Goodwill and you just kind of look back and see the different fabrics. If something stands out and looks different, always check it because that is sometimes how I find the best things. And look at this shirt. <laughs> I thought, wow, that is really interesting. I've got to check what brand that is. So I go and it had a dry cleaning tag. I had not heard of this brand before. Well, I'll just take off that dry cleaning tag right now. So this is the brand and it is 100% silk, size large, and the comps looked really good on it. So I was excited about that. And um, I believe it was vintage. And so then I kept looking and I found this one. 
And look how unique that one is also. And ah, this one has a dry cleaning tag too. And oh, I just almost broke my wise man. <laughs> then, so Joan Leslie, and this one had good sold comps also. And then another one. And these three shirts were all the color of the day. So they were half off. So I can't believe they made it that long. Um, they were originally going to be $5.35 and they were half off. So they were $2.68 each. And that is Jameson. This is how I knew for sure it was vintage. It had the union tag. And this one, I think... It feels like silk. I'll have to look up a little more information. So I think those will do well. Sometimes some of the vintage or your more unique things can take a little bit longer to sell, and, but it's worth it to hold out for a higher price. In, in my opinion, some people wanna sell it quick, flip it and put the money into something else. So it just depends on what your business model is. But I found that I'm okay waiting just a little bit longer to try to get the most out of it. So we will list a few of those together. And then if you want to watch my what sold videos, you can subscribe down below and hit the notification bell and it will let you know whenever I release new videos. I will be creating what sold videos and when any of these sell, I will put them in the what sold videos and you can see exactly what they sold for. So that was step number one. You have to gather your inventory, whether around your house or at Goodwill store, the Goodwill outlet, a discount store, wherever you source, gather your items. Number two, what I do is I photograph my items and I don't have a fancy setup at all. And I've done this for 16 years and sold a lot of items without a fancy setup. I go into my laundry room because that has the brightest light in there. And I always clean the floor really good first, make sure there's not any lint or anything on it. And I just lay things out flat. I use a tape measure and I take a picture on the item to show exactly how it measured. And then some things I have a mannequin that I will put on the mannequin and I actually just go in my bedroom and put her in the corner and take pictures there. And it just works out really well for me doing it that way. So um, you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment. I didn't even have a mannequin um, for the first probably 10 or 11 years of listing. So as long as you make sure your pictures are clean and clear, and it really is helpful to remove the background and make it a nice white background, that's really what is most important. I haven't ever purchased like the big lights <laughs> or anything. I actually purchased a little tiny ring light when I started making YouTube videos, but I have had never used anything like that to create my listings on eBay. So now let's go take some pictures. I start with my wise men and I just place them on my kitchen counter right under a light. And I take a picture of the front, of the back, of the sides, then I get a tape measure and I show exactly how tall each of them measures. That saves time to take a picture with the tape measure, not as much to type out when you are actually creating the listing. And then I will look for any details to take close-up pictures. If there are ever any flaws, be sure you take those pictures. And then I take a picture of any labels or any kind of markings. Next, I take pictures in the laundry room, anything that I need to lie flat, and I take a picture of the front. Then I take measurements with the tape measure. Again, it saves time and it shows exactly how I measured. Then I take pictures of the tags, any information that the tags give me. I wanna take pictures of it. I've read that people look at the pictures more than they actually read the description. So that gives them something visual to look at when they are trying to decide if they would like to buy the item. Then I get the back of the shorts and that is it on those. 
Now I'm moving on to the Life is Good t-shirt. I just lay it out flat, take a front photo, take a close-up of the graphic. I take a picture of the label tag and any information that's provided there. At the very bottom, there was a little Life is Good tag, so I took a picture of that. Also, the blue stitching on the side, I wanna be sure and show that. Then I find the care tag and take a picture of the material and how it's laundered. Then I take a picture of the measurements. I just get the length and the underarm to underarm measurement. I use the app Photo Room, which is circled in yellow, to remove the background. Those are my daughters, Sydney and Morgan, on my screensaver. My son, Jason, is on the other screen. When I get inside the app, I select that blue circle with the plus sign. It goes to my pictures and I just select the pictures that I want to remove the background from. I then just wait and it knows what to do. It goes through and it scans the photo and look how great it made that background. Then it just goes to the next photo and the next photo and somehow I did not pull up the Life is Good shirt at the same time so I just go back quickly, select the Life is Good shirts that I want to have the background removed. Then I just click save it to my photos and that's it. It is so simple and fast. Next, I'm going to create drafts and upload my photos from my phone. So I will go to the eBay app and just go to the main search. First, we are going to create a draft for the three wise men. So I put in keywords that I think will pull up current listings like mine. First of all, I wanna see what the competition is out there. Are there others exactly like mine? And if so, how much are they selling for? How many are there? Because that makes a difference in how I'm going to price the item. And I look through and I do not find anything exactly. So I add another keyword and I don't find anything exactly. I keep looking down and I see, oh, there's one that looks like mine. So I go into it and it is similar, but it is not exactly the same. So I look at their price. Oh, they're only charging $35.99 plus shipping, but it is not exactly the same as mine. Nobody else has the three wise men out there right now exactly like mine. So that's a good thing. Then I go to filter and sold so I can see what has sold in the past 90 days and how much it has sold for, how many have sold. And I look and I find one that looks exactly like mine. <laughs> so I keep scrolling down and wanna see if there are any others and I don't see anything else exactly like mine. I see similar items, so I go back up and I then change it. I always search highest <laughs> first because I wanna be sure that I get the most for my money and in case it pulls anything else up. So I go into that listing and it is just like mine, except for they said theirs was brand new. And I look and see what they say about the listing, how they describe it, and sometimes I will copy some of their information to paste and give me a starting point. Then I go to sell one like this. That is going to create a draft for me to start creating my listing. I add photos and it pulls up my camera photo roll and I'm going to select the photos that I would like to have in the listing. If you can have your first photo that has a white background, that really helps in search results. Also, it is good to have them in the square size and on my phone camera, I can just go to the settings and put it in square mode when I take pictures and that's very helpful. So I am just selecting in the order that I want my photos to appear in the listing and then I will just wait for them to upload. Then as soon as it finishes uploading, it goes back to the draft and I usually just save there. I wanted to look and see what the trending price was and it said that the trending price was $60, so that sounds good to me. <laughs> and then I'm just going to click on save for later and it will be in my drafts with the photos and kind of an outline. Next, I go to my next item that I want to list and that is the American Eagle shorts. And there are going to be so many of 
these. So I'm I list these all the time. I will probably just pick one that is kind of similar. So I go through and I look at what's out there. A lot of them, it pulls up just the regular jeans. I'm going to go to sold items and find one to sell similar. So it will pre-fill pre a lot of information for me and that just takes a lot of the data entry work out of it when you can find one that is like your item and sell similar to it. But always check all the fields and make sure that they listed it correctly. So I find a listing that I like and I go into it and I select sell similar at the top of the listing and it is going to create a draft for me pre-filled with the information that they had in their listing. I select the round circle with the plus for photos. It pulls up my camera roll. I'm going to select the photos that I would like to add in this listing in order that I would like them to appear. The first one on jeans and shorts, I normally put the back pockets so that they can see what the back pockets look like. Then I just wait for the photos to upload. And as soon as they do, oh, it asked me if I wanna remove the background. I already removed the background, so I did not. I did crop it a little bit smaller so that it can show the shorts more and not as much of the white background. But you also wanna to try to keep it in square mode so it's better for search results. And then I just wait for them to finish uploading and I will have another draft that is ready to go when I get to my laptop. I find that it's a lot slower for me to add in just the data entry part on my phone, so I like switching to my laptop. You can do it all from your phone if you would like to, though. Now they finished uploading, so I scroll down to the bottom. I paused really quickly at the pricing just to kind of look and see what it says, the trending prices and it shows low, so I know they can sell for more than that though, just from experience. Then I go down to the very bottom and put save for later. Next. Okay, the last draft for right now, the Life is Good men's v-neck shirt. And I put that in the search and I don't really find a lot. So I put in one love since it said it on there and there is one other and it looks like they are asking $8.49 for it, but theirs is a small slash medium and mine is an extra large. So an extra large in a men's shirt usually sells a lot better than a small medium and I am pretty sure that I can get 18 to 20, maybe with shipping included on that or 14 or 15 plus shipping. So I go through and I'm just going to find one that has sold. Let's see, I take off the solds. I decide, oh, I'm going to go with the one that is already existing because it would be the most similar. So I go down to the very bottom and I find the option to sell one like this and it's going to create a draft for me. I click on the circle with the plus to add the photos from my photo roll that I already have ready to go. I select them in order that I would like to have them, and I just wait for them to upload. When they finally finish uploading, it will take me to my draft, and I will just scroll down, usually stopping at the pricing and changing it to buy it now and seeing what the trending price is. Then I just scroll down to the very bottom and select save for later, and that's it. Okay, now I am at my laptop. I uploaded my photos to drafts, and then I come to the laptop because I find it's a lot easier to do all the typing data entry on my laptop. You can do it all on your phone if you prefer that. Just this is how I prefer it. I will shrink myself <laughs> and you go to the main eBay page and I'm going to click on sell. and it's a little slow. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to my drafts and it will pull up the drafts that I just created. 
And there we go. We'll start with the, the wise man. So I click on resume draft. And here it is. And the title that they had in it copies it. So I'm going to look and see if I want to put the same information or different information. I think having that year 2002 is good. I'm going to look at it. Do they, they don't have foundations, so I think that could be important. Um, three wise men, they have, it is by, what? By, let's see, Karen Hahn. So they didn't put Karen Hahn, so I'm, I was trying to click on the wrong screen. Three wise men, so I'm going to put, I don't think I need to put by, I'll just put three wise men, Karen Hong, Christmas. I'm going to put Bible verse, says, and I'm going to put nativity scene. And then you do not have to put a subtitle in. That's an extra dollar fifty every month. If it was something super, super expensive, I could consider it, but I rarely ever put a subtitle. Then the custom label, that is just anything that you want to put there. You don't have to put anything there, but if you want to see something that the buyer can't see in their listing, then you can. This is where I put my cost of goods and also where I'm going to find my item when it sells. And I used to put that information in the actual description. I put like bucket, if it was bucket 124, I'd put 124, but you have to click on the listing to find it. And if you have 20 things to ship out, that takes a lot of time. This will display when you sell your item on that one page, you'll be able to see anything that you've sold. You'll see all the custom labels. So what I put, I'm going to put, I got it at the Goodwill not the outlet, and I'm going to put the date that I listed it so that I can see how long it took to sell. They were $1.91 each. I'm just going to put $6, and then I'm going to put it upstairs in cabinet three, so I will know where to find it. Then it already has the category in, and that, that says 1946 to 90. I do not believe that was correct, so I will correct that because since it was 2002, that would be the correct category. You can add a second category, but I don't do that. It would be a very, very rare case and it costs extra. Then store categories. If you have an eBay store, you can organize it by categories. And so I do that, but I don't have a category for this, so I'm just going to put other. Condition is used. Then you put description. Um, I put pre-owned. Very good. And then you see my pictures. They look so nice with that white background, and it was so easy to do. So I'm not going to change anything on that. Then there are item specifics. There are certain ones that are required and certain ones that are recommended. And a lot of people complain about these, but these help your listings sell and it helps them be found. Say somebody is searching by item specifics. If they search by that specific and you have not filled yours in, yours won't be found. So it's worth the extra minute it takes to fill them out and some of them you're required to. So uh, let's see, featured refined nativity scene, time period, we're going to update that. It fills in, pre-fills in a lot of information for you. Nativity, okay, so that is the correct brand. The year, the, where is it manufactured, made in China, and that's a frequent one. And we don't need to put the California warning. Sometimes there are um, warnings on when I sold cell phone cases. Um, so I add that if it has it on the package. Occasion, Christmas, time period, that's correct. That's correct. Then I'm going to just uh, change this a little bit. And I'm going to put foundations. Three wise men, 
I'm going to put the by, what's it, Karen Hahn, better double check. Yep, Karen Hahn, three wise men. Um, wise men are in excellent condition. I did not find any flaws. Please see photos for details. They are beautiful. B e a u t i f u l with by boy I can't spell Bible verses written in script. There is a glitter. How about an all? Oh, is it all over? Yes, all over glitter. on each of the wise men. You do not have to write super long descriptions. Be sure if there is any type of flaw that you put that. I have the measurements in the photos. Thank goodness for spell check <laughs> because I tend to make a lot of mistakes when I type. <laughs> and then I think that is enough. Then fixed price, um, it was showing Let's see, that last one sold for something under 79. My store goes on an automatic discount of 25% off. So I have to account for that. So I'm gonna list these for 89.99 and then they will be marked down 25%. Then I'm going to select best offer best offer because I believe you rank higher in the sort search results if you click on best offer. And you can take any offer that you want. You want a little room to wiggle though. And then I'm going to say I would accept offers of um, $59.99. You know, I'm gonna boost this up a little bit more since it is going to go on 25% off. So then, um, there's quantity of one. If I put quantity of three, it would make it look like I had three sets of three, but I only have one set of three. And then, it's not a private listing. Donation, you can make a donation to a charity if you would like to. You can require immediate payment with Buy It Now. And if you do that, then they have to pay immediately. Otherwise, it's available for other people. I don't ever do that. I'm okay if they need a few days to pay. And then, um, but if you send them an offer and they accept an offer, then they don't have to pay immediately. So um, be careful of that. If you want immediate payment, then you might not want to offer best offer. Otherwise, it could take them a little while. Then you don't have to worry about sales tax. They collect it for you. Domestic, I put returns are accepted in 30 days, and I am not going to do free returns on that one. I just kind of take that on a case-by-case -case basis. And then, um, oh, no, I don't do international returns. Now, I'm going to package up my item and see how much it weighs. So, I'm going to wrap them each up. And one thing on breakables, if you can box items individually and give them plenty of space in between, it's very helpful. They are going to weigh, with a lot of cushion in a box, only one pound, eight ounces. And the box is the priority shoe box, so it has dimensions on it. So, when I pre-fill in my shipping information, then when it sells, I already have everything already. And if it, if I already have all my packing supplies ready, sometimes I'll pre-package it and then just write on the box what it is. That makes it super easy. So I'm going to offer priority mail 
and I do my handling one business day. I don't add a handling cost. However, I will make a little bit of money on shipping because it charges them the regular USPS rates. And when you print your postage online, then you get a discount. So um, you actually make a little bit on the shipping. Then I'm going to sell internationally. So all I have to do is say calculated. I put in there the global shipping program, but I also do worldwide and I will do international standard delivery. I'm going to offer another service. I will also ship worldwide with first class international. And that's all you do to be able to ship internationally. And I have a video on shipping internationally and how easy it is. And I will have that at the end of this video also if you're interested. No handling cost. I'm not going to add international site visibility because since I am shipping through the global shipping program or international program, it will already have um, that visibility. Then I'm going to put in the dimensions. It is the shoe box, which is 14 and 3 eighths. So I'm going to put 15 by 7 and 1 eighths. So I'm going to put 8 by 5 and 1 8 so I'm going to put 6. The custom weight, I will probably find some little tiny boxes or something, some kind of extra barrier to put in there since it didn't weigh that much. So I'm going to boost it up to two pounds. It'll be the same weight, whether it's one pound, one ounce, or two pounds, zero ounces. You can exclude to certain locations that you don't want to ship to, but I'm not going to do that. Then I promote my listing to give it a little bit more visibility and it suggests a rate of 4%. I always just go at 1% and then that's it. You list the item and that one's ready to go. And then when it sells, I don't have to worry about figuring out shipping or anything like that. It's already taken care of and I will have it boxed up ready to go. Then I always preview my listing to make sure that it looks good. And, oh, I didn't mean to hit sell similar. I'm trying to make sure this is on the screen good. So this looks good. Let me scroll over a little bit. Looks great. Okay, so I'm ready to do my next one. So I'm going to X out of this now going to complete another draft and how about if we do the life is good shirt so I'm going to grab it and I will weigh it first to see how much it weighs and 5.7 ounces so um, It'll be the same rate if it's up to eight ounces. If I added a poly bag to that, it would be six point something. So I'm just going to put in seven ounces when I get to the shipping. Okay, so they have in their life is good, one love. I have been told not to use all caps. So um, it, it, I've heard that it hurts in the search results. Life is good. And what was that called? One love. And I'm going to put, in, um, it does not say anything about being slim fit. I think that was just that person's opinion. So I'm going to put men's V-neck t-shirt, palm trees, striped, and it is super soft, size extra large. And sometimes I'll put the XL and I'll spell out extra large. Then no subtitle again. I don't want to pay an extra dollar fifty. My custom label, I am going to put that I got it at Goodwill. And I'm just going to copy this right here for the date. I paid $3.33. And it is going to be in bin number 124. That's the bin I'm on right now then I am not going to add another category. It looks like they have it in men's clothing, 
clothing, shirts, t-shirts, that's correct. So most of this stuff, when you do a sell, sell similar, will already be pre-filled in, but you have to make sure just in case someone else listed it incorrectly. No second category, because that will cost. Store category, if you have a store, and I do, so I'm gonna put it under men's clothing. It is not a multi-quantity listing, so ignore that. I don't know the UPC, so it does not apply. Pre-owned, pre-owned, and it is excellent. It had a tiny little spot. It looked like mascara <laughs> or something, and I used a little liquid Dawn, and it came right out, and it looks perfect. Then, brand, life is good. It's a V-neck, and it's extra large, so now let's look at everything. The brand is correct. The size type, it's a regular size. The other options are big and tall, and it's not a big and tall size, extra large. It's a t-shirt, the primary color is white. You can only choose one color, or there is a multi-color option. If you look, if it's a lot of colors, you can just put multi-color, but this one's primarily white. Department is men. Theme, um, I might put beach. I think Aloha could go with that too. I think vacation. I think summer would work. Okay, short sleeve. Regular fit, I didn't see anything on the tag that indicated, oh, wait, I do see it. They were correct. I didn't look close enough. It is slim fit. So what can I remove from here? Oh, I'm going to make that not capital t-shirt v-neck men's white i can take out striped slim fit it's good to always check and double check <laughs> i just was going too quickly i guess okay my pictures look good my first one it's important to have that first photo with the white background then it's not slimming. Slimming would mean that it was like a shaper type shirt. So it is a slim fit, but it's not slimming. Short sleeve fit is slim. They have striped. I wouldn't put stripe because, let's see, is there graphic? Um, it's not all over striped. I would, I'm just going to put graphic. Let's see, no character, character family. Where is it made? It is made in Peru. And you can type that in. For the longest time, you had to scroll. And it was a pain because when it was one that was at the bottom. So I'm so grateful to be able to type it in now. Then material is, let's see. There must be a material tag, 100% cotton super soft cotton and vintage no it is not vintage size is extra large oh and here style graphic t okay here life is good i'm just going to build upon what they put one love white v-neck t-shirt palm trees men's slim fit Size extra large, condition is pre-owned. And I'm going to put 100% cotton, so soft. <laughs> and then I'm going to take the caps lock. Life is good, one love. That's correct, right? Yep, one love, white v-neck shirt, men's slim fit, size extra large. Okay, that looks good. And it said the average price is only $11 with three with 0% free shipping. I feel like I can get more than that. I'm going to put 22.99, maybe a little lower than I had thought originally, <laughs> but um, I still think I can get more than that. And that's going to go down 25%. Let buyers make offers. And I'm going to put the shipping at $4.99. I'm just going to leave that up for offers. Ah, I'm going to boost that up to 23. 
a lot of that is just guessing, <laughs> using kind of what you've done in the past. Let's see, now quantity is one. It's not a private listing. I'm not going to put donation there. Payment, I'm not requiring immediate payment. I'm not going to do the sales tax. They do that, I don't know why that's even on there. Um, I will do domestic returns. I'll do free returns on this one because it wouldn't be very much and the chance of that is rare. My return rate's like 2.3% or something like that, but not putting international returns. First class is the shipping and um, we'll just do calculated. If I was going to do flat, I probably would put 4.99 because it'll probably be that or less no matter where it goes in the United States. I'm going to sell internationally with the global shipping program and I'm also going to offer to ship worldwide using eBay International Standard Delivery and worldwide using First Class Mail International. And we said it would be about seven ounces with the packaging. Then I'm going to boost it at 1%, so it will still be a promoted listing, but not cost too much. Then I'm not doing volume. And that's it, list it. We'll do one more. And that would be the American Eagle shorts. And these say American Eagle Super Stretch X. And they said midi and they do look, they're not a low rise, they're not a high rise. And so I think those would be a midi cuffed shorts size eight. I'm going to put denim jean. And these are kind of, wow, they're kind of in between light and medium. They have some fading. I'm, I'm just going to leave that off. Then my custom label, I am going to put Goodwill and it, these were four, oh gosh, were they 434 or 424? Usually I have my receipt with me when I'm listing. Uh, well, I think they're 434, yeah, that's right. And then they are going to be in bucket number 124. Then they're women's shorts, that's correct. My store category is going to be women's and junior's clothing. No variations. I don't know the UPC, condition is pre-owned. Then in the description box, pre-owned. Very good. There were no flaws. Look, my pictures look good. I will do the back pockets for the photo. We're going to update. Yes, it's eight. Stretch. Yes, they have spandex, so they're stretch. Plus, they're called super stretch. That's how I picked it up. And cuffed. They're denim. Okay, so now let's look through all the item specifics. Brand American Eagle Outfitters, cuffed shorts. Hmm, I would, let's see, is there cuff shorts, Bermuda biker? I'm looking to see. Uh, I would kind of rather put um, jean shorts. Jean shorts. Okay, and I thought, I thought it pulled the size eight from it. Did I not put eight? Yes. Huh, weird. I thought I selected okay. Okay, well, I can put it in, size eight. Then blue, department women, fabric type is denim. The material is a cotton blend. Then occasion, I would say yes, casual. Um, there are no accents. The rise, you can look at your pictures if you've um, done it that way. Uh, did I not do the rise? I will go back, I should always do the rise. I can't believe I didn't do that. Let me look on my phone and see. Maybe I just didn't import it. Okay. Oh, I can't believe I didn't take a picture of the rise, but they definitely look like a mid-rise. So I am going to go back and edit that, take a picture and add that in because I could get asked a question later and it is a big time waster when you have to go 
pull the item, measure it, and people like to just have that and not have to wait. So I would not wait on that waist size. That's good to put in too. It looks like this one was, let's see, that's 15, 16, so 32 and vintage no front type it is a flat front it is not pleated it's cuff stretch fabric oh light to medium it is machine washable the model is the super stretch x it's not modified the bottom size is eight the exact length, I don't know what they mean by that, length, inseam, hmm, they didn't ask inseam, that's okay, it's in the pictures. Okay, so now we just need very basic American Eagle, Super Stretch X, um, I'm going to put denim cuff shorts, size eight, these shorts look like a medium to light wash with factory produced fading at the front thigh area. Because you can tell that's how they're meant to be, it's not wear. Okay, and they are they look really good. I'm going to put great pre-owned condition, and I like to put there are no holes, rips, or stains. And then I think I'm going to put in there um, soft denim that has a good amount of stretch. And I think that's good. And usually, actually, let's see, average sold price is $13.19. These actually usually sell better for me on Poshmark. So I will list them there also because I think I will get more money out of them there. But I'm going to go ahead and put $24.99. And I'm going to take do best offer. Then I'm going to weigh them and see what they weigh. 9.6 ounces plus the poly bag. So if it goes up to 10.6 ounces, that's good. Anything between 8 ounces after you go to 8.1 ounces all the way to 12 ounces, it's the same rate. So that is just fine. So it can go first class. So oh, let me go slowly through these. Um, I'm not going to put an automatic accept offer because I'm not really going to take a lot less than that. I probably would take a couple dollars less. Um, okay, we are not going to, re to require buy it now. Domestic returns accepted. Hmm. Okay, I will take them back. Oh, oh, yes, I always take them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. I always take returns, but the, where I go back and forth on is will I pay the returns or not? And sometimes women can return somewhat just because, oh, it didn't look good on me. So sometimes I do not pay the return on that. Then no international returns. And I'm going to offer first class shipping calculated and handling time one day, no handling cost. International shipping, yes, same as the others. I'm going to sell with the International Global Shipping Program. Then I'm going to ship worldwide using eBay International Standard Delivery and worldwide using First Class. And if you want to start with shipping, if you do just the Global Shipping Program, it is just exactly as easy as shipping within the United States. You just print your label, just like you do the others, um, just like you do domestic. Now, if you do these two, you have to fill out like one or two other lines and it's super, super, super easy. And you can get a lot more sales if you sell internationally. So watch the video at the end if you're thinking about it because it is so worth it. 
Okay, handling cost, no. No additional eBay site. How much did we say that was? Let's see. I know it was under 12 ounces. I think it was 10. Okay, with packaging, it is going to be 10 ounces. And then I'm going to promote it at 1%. And list the item. And that completes the listings. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye.